Hey everyone, Jeff here from Hot Tub Owner HQ, and the question we're getting into today is all about hot tub shock. After all, you do need to be shocking the water in your hot tub about once a week. But if you're not really familiar with all of the nuances of hot tubs, you might not even be sure about what hot tub shock is, how it differs from sanitizer, and then you hear terms like oxidizer thrown around as well. It can be very confusing. So we're demystifying all of that today and getting into some real answers that will really help clarify everything and clarify your water. <laughs> Anyway, let's get into it. So hot tub shock is often going to be a chlorine based product, but there are non chlorine shocks as well. And of course, sanitizer, which you probably are adding to your water every two or three days, depending upon how often you use it, can also be chlorine based, but it can also be bromine based. And there's some enzyme all natural alternatives as well. So it can be very confusing. So if you use a chlorine sanitizer, why do you need to add a chlorine shock? Well, the chlorine shock is much more concentrated. It's much more powerful than the sanitizer. And what it does is it reactivates the chlorine or the bromine that you have in the water, because after a while they can break down and stop working. And and they can turn into something called chloramines or bromamines. And when you dip a test strip in, it can give false readings. In other words, you might think the levels of chlorine or bromine are acceptable to soak in when they're really not because they've been converted into chloramines or bromamines. And the hot tub shock that you add about once a week helps revitalize that. It doesn't mean you never have to add sanitizer again. It just maintains a certain level of safety in the water. But when you go to the, the pool supply store or you go to Home Depot or wherever it is that you get your chemicals and you walk down the aisle, you'll see lots of different products. Some are designed for hot tubs, some are designed for pools, and some say both. And it can be hard to know what to buy to treat your hot tub with. And for shock specifically, which is what we're getting into in this video, the most common kinds of shock for pools are going to be ones like this one that are basically a product called Cal Hypo. That's a, kind of an abbreviated version of the word calcium hydrochlorate. And this is typically gonna be used in swimming pools and not in hot tubs. It's not recommended for hot tubs for two reasons. One is it has to be diluted in water because it's so strong. If you don't dilute it, uh, you could damage the equipment. It could also lead to bleaching effects on things like the pillows. So you always want to dilute it. They even recommend diluting it when you add it to a large swimming pool. So you would definitely want to dilute it if you were adding it to your hot tub. And of course, with all of these kinds of chemicals, you want to start small. You can always add more if you need to. You can't add less. You just just have to play a waiting game. The other kind of shock that is more common, especially for hot tubs, is one like this one, which is sodium dichlor. That's typically what the, it's referred to as, and, and you'll see that in lots of different brands. The plus of sodium dichlor is it doesn't have calcium added to it, the way the Cal Hypo does, and it doesn't have to be diluted. It can just go right in. Uh, you still want to kind of start small because, like I mentioned, you can always add more. You can't add less. Um, calcium in the Cal Hypo can be bad in your hot tub for a couple of reasons as well. So I do want to point that out. Uh, calcium, of course, is going to be present if your water from the hose is hard water. In other words, it has high levels of calcium in it. And calcium can really be bad in a hot tub. It can lead to scale buildup that can eventually clog pipes. It can damage the equipment um, and it can wreak havoc on your filter as well. And you'll know if the water in your house is hard water because if you look at a shower head you're going to see a lot of scale buildup around the shower head so if you see that you definitely don't want to be adding uh, calcium into your water the way you would if you were adding this cal hypo shock uh, in fact you may even want to use a product like leisure time defender which reduces scale buildup and reduces the calcium levels in your water so if you've got super hard water you probably do want to use a product like that but you definitely don't want to add calcium to it. But like I mentioned, a product like this, the sodium dichlor, is going to be the way to go for hot tubs. It doesn't have to be diluted. You just pour it right in. No added buffers or anything like calcium, the way some of the pool shocks are formulated. So the next question I get, of course, is how much 
shock should I add to my hot tub? And the answer, of course, is it depends. And I hate saying that, but it's true. The first thing you're going to want to do is dip a test strip in and see what the chlorine levels look like or the bromine levels if you're using that as your sanitizer. If it's super high, you're not going to want to add a lot because then that's going to skyrocket those chlorine levels. If it's non-existent, you may want to add more than you normally would and it may be time to add some sanitizer as well. I typically use about probably about an eighth of a cup of shock to start with. Like I mentioned earlier, you can always add more. You can't add less. You just have to play a waiting game. If you do overdo it though, all is not lost and you don't have to drain the water in your hot tub. Leave the cover off for a few hours. Turn on those jets and just kind of let it go. The sunlight breaks down chlorine in particular very, very quickly. It breaks down a lot faster than bromine does. That's why I like bromine for my sanitizer more than I like chlorine and why a lot of other people do too. That sunlight is just going to basically destroy it and wipe it out. You may still find, though, that the chlorine levels are going to be too high for another day or two, but fear not. They'll keep getting lower and lower and lower, and eventually you'll reach a good place where you can get back in and adjust the other chemicals if you need to. It's probably not going to take more than a day or two, though. Another thing I want to bring up, of course, is it always sounds a little vague when people say, well, use add sanitizer to your hot tub every couple of days and add shock about once a week. And that sounds very vague as opposed to being on a very strict schedule. And the reason for that vagueness, of course, is that you might use your hot tub less frequently than I do, or maybe you use it more frequently than I do. Maybe you regularly have four or five people in this thing every two or three days or every day. In that case, you're going to find that you have to add a lot more chemicals to your water to keep up with that than I do. Typically, it's me and my toddler in here, probably three to four days a week. Um, very rare that anyone else in our family gets in there. And occasionally we'll have friends come over, but it's not very often. And before you get concerned about my toddler, I do keep the temperature at 98. That way it's safe for, for she and I to soak in. And I actually like it at 98 all year round. That way it's not too hot, not too cold. But that is why the levels and the frequency of adding the chemicals might vary from person to person. It depends on how many people are using the hot tub and how frequently it's getting used because all of those things are going to deplete your chemicals at different rates compared to somebody else. So what is the best hot tub shock? Well, there's not really an answer to that question. There are a lot of very good products on the market. I've tried many of them and I even have used this Cal Hypo once when I ran out of uh, my other shock and I couldn't find one and I needed to shock it. And of course, I, like I mentioned earlier, I, I followed the instructions where I diluted it in a five gallon bucket first. I added a very small amount. I knew that there was going to be some of that calcium in there. So I added some of my leisure time defender to kind of protect against that. So there's not really one best hot tub shock. This is the one that I'm currently using and I do like it quite a bit. It's from Spa Guard and it's called Enhanced Shock. And I do find that the water is really, really super crystal clear. I use bromine for my sanitizer and this chlorine-based shock for my shock. I do find, though, that non-chlorine-based shocks, while perhaps gentler on the skin, always lead to cloudier water, at least in my experience. I like really clean, clear water. I don't like a lot of chlorine smell, and this shock product does not give me a lot of chlorine smell. And of course, the bromine sanitizer doesn't either. So right now I'm smelling no chlorine whatsoever. I'm not sure exactly how the water looks on camera because there's sunlight and, and shadows and angles and things like that. But to me, it looks crystal clear, and that's how I like it to be. And of course, with any kind of chlorine-based shock or sanitizer, you always want to wait at least 20 minutes, if not longer, before you get in after adding it. And you're going to want to turn the jets on and leave the lid off too. Uh, that way the, the, the jets being on and kicking up the, the chlorine isn't going to damage the underside of your cover. Anyway, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It sends a great signal to YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button too. That way you get notified the next time I put out a helpful video just like this one, and we'll see you in the next video.